Hey guys, this is Miss Sherry, and I'm sitting here waiting on a ball game to get over with. So I thought I would go ahead and start this book. It's called Ida B, and it is by Katherine Hennigan. And so we're going to start it and see what we think about it. Here we go. Chapter one. Ida B, Mama said to me on one of those days that start right and just keep heading towards perfect until you go to sleep. When you're done with the dishes, you can go play. Daddy and I are going to be working till dinner. Yes, ma'am, I said back, but I said it like, yes, ma'am, because I couldn't wait to get out, to get on with my business. I could already hear the brook calling to me through the back door screen. Come on and play. I ought to be hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up. I had three places I wanted to visit, six things I wanted to make, and two conversations I hoped to have before dinner time. Mama was washing, Daddy was drying, and I was putting away the dishes from lunch. And I knew that the moment I set the last pan in its place, I was free. But the way these two were chatting and laughing and acting like we had till the next week to finish up, I could see it was going to be a while. My insides started itching and my feet started hopping one on the other because they were 10 minutes past being ready to go. So I decided to speed things up. Daddy, hand me the dishes. I'd sprint to the cupboard and put it away. Race right back again and put my hand out for the next one. With my right foot tap, tap, tapping the seconds away. Hold your horses, Ida B. Daddy told me there's plenty of time to do whatever you're planning. And he'd pass me a plate just as slowly as you please. Well, that stopped me in my tracks because when Daddy said, what Daddy said might have seemed all right to him, but it was sitting about two miles beyond wrong with me. I wasn't going to be able to put away an, any tiny teaspoon until I set things straight. Daddy, I said, and I waited till he was looking straight at me before I went on. Yes, Ida B., he answered, turning towards me. And staring right into his eyeballs, I told him, There is never enough time for fun. Daddy's eyes opened wide, and for a half a second, I wondered if I was in for something close to trouble. But then the two ends of his mouth turned up just a little. Ida B., he told the ceiling while he shook his head. Hmm, Mama said, like a smile would sound if it possibly could. And as soon as Daddy handed me the big frying pan, I set it in the drawer next to the oven, and I was on my way. Come on, Rufus, I called the Daddy's old floppy-eared dog who was napping under the table. You can come, too, so you'll have some company. Now, a school of goldfish could go swimming in the pool of drool that dog makes while he's sleeping. But as soon as he heard his name and saw me, he headed up, cleaned up the extra slobber under his mouth, and in two and one half seconds time, he was waiting for me at the back door. All right, guys, that's chapter one. I will see you next time for chapter two of Ida B.